Welcome back to Mondays with May from Arts for All. My name is May Lisa, and I am a teaching artist with Arts for All. If you've had me in your classroom or if you've been watching, you might recognize me as Miss May. Hello. For those of you that don't know Arts for All, Arts for All offers artistic, accessible opportunities to children in the New York City area, and we are always working to incorporate our five core values, working to build self-confidence, self-expression, teamwork, resilience, and creativity in children. And while our focus does remain in New York City, through all of our virtual learning content and opportunities. We are so happy to have children from anywhere view and join us like right here with me on Mondays with May. I'm coming to you from my apartment in Brooklyn, New York on Lenape land. I wonder where you might be watching from. Make sure that you tell us in the comments, where are you tuning in from? It is the month of March, and that means we are celebrating Women's History Month. Woo Happy Women's History Month, everyone. During Women's History Month, we celebrate important women in history and in our society. 
And I wonder if you have any favorite women in history or in your life or community that you want to celebrate. Tell us in the comments, who is your favorite woman, either in your life, in your community, or in history? I want to know who you're celebrating this month. Why do we celebrate Women's History Month? Well, specifically in the United States, women have not always been treated or considered equal to men. We had to fight for our right to vote, to work, to play and exist in the same ways as other people. So even in the year of 2022, we are still celebrating women being the first to do certain things like... Woohoo! Congratulations to Judge Kentaji Brown Jackson, who is the first Black woman to be appointed as a Supreme Court Justice. This is really recent news. This is just happening like in the last weeks. So, Judge Kentaji Brown Jackson is one of very few women to ever be on the Supreme Court. There's been 115, I believe, Supreme Court justices, and only five of those have been women. That's not a lot of women for how many women there are in our country. So we are really excited that women are still making history and being first and making strides because we know that women are capable and smart as much as men, right? <laughs> it's silly sometimes, but here we are. So let's celebrate. But first, we're going to start with warming up our bodies. So I'm going to stand up. You can stand up, copy me as best you can, but make sure that you're doing things that feel good and safe on your body and in the space that you're in. I'm going to start by sending my energy upwards. Can you send your energy upwards? That could look different on different bodies and in different spaces. I'm reaching up. I'm going up on my toes. <sighs> now, can you send your energy down, 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 downwards energy? That could look different on everyone. What does downwards energy look like on your body and in your space? And again, upwards energy, up, 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 upwards energy, <sighs> and downwards energy, down, down, down. One more time, upwards energy, send your energy up, up, and now send your energy down, 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 down. Now I'm going to reach and stretch, reach over to one side and say, Ooh, reach to the other side, say, ah. Now I'm going to open really big and I'm going to say, wow, 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 wow. And I'm going to do and say, twist, twist. Let's do that again. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, wow, 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 twist, twist, nice. Now we are going to isolate our head. I'm going to look up to my ceiling and down to my toes, up to my ceiling and down to my toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, and nod your head. Say yes, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Should women be equal? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now look over one shoulder, over the other shoulder, over one shoulder, over the other shoulder. Look from shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder, looking shoulder, 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 shoulder. shake your head. Say no. 
uh-uh, no way, uh-uh, say no, uh-uh, say no, means no. <laughs> All right, now we're going to move our shoulders. Can you move your shoulders like a bicycle? Yes. Big, big circles. And then the opposite direction, move your shoulders like a bicycle. And shrug your shoulders up, say, I don't know, and drop them. Bring your shoulders up, say, I don't know, and drop them. Up and down, I don't know, and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, and give your shoulders a shake and a shimmy. Shimmy and shake those shoulders. <laughs> Now we're going to move our hips. We're going to do some hip bumps. You can get funky with it. We're doing eight to one side, eight to the other side, then four and four, then two and two, then back and forth one at a time. Ready? Let's get those hips moving. You can count with me at home. We're going one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Oh yeah! <laughs> All right. Now we are going to shake our whole body. We're gonna shake, shake, shake. We're gonna count down from ten to zero. Can you count with me? Count down and shake your entire body. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And let's have a seat. All right. Well, I certainly feel warmed up in my body. My brain's feeling warmed up, and I hope that you are too. I hope you're ready to listen to a story. Let's read a book. All right, if you know Miss May, then you know that Miss May loves the, yep, you guessed it, the library. <laughs> Today's story is called Planting Stories, the life of librarian and storyteller Pura Belpre, words by Anika Aldmui Denise illustrations by Paula Escobar. If you've been watching Mondays with May, you already know how much I enjoy and appreciate the library. And this story is about another woman who was a first. Let's read the book and find out what she was the first to do. Oh, these illustrations are kind of clues about what's going to be in the story. I like this page. That must be, who do you think this is sitting under the tree? It must be Buddha. It is 1921. Pura Teresa Alberpre leaves her home in San Juan for a visit to Nueva York. Words travel with her, stories her abuela taught her, cuentos folklorios Pura retold in the shade of a tamarind tree. Do you know who an abuela is? An abuela, that's a grandma, grandmother. So Pura's abuela taught her Cuentos folkloricos. That means folk tales. Folk tales are stories that are passed down in communities through generations, told out loud mostly. 
folk tales, cuentos folklorios. And there is, oops, there they are under the tree. I hope you can see them there under the tree. Now a new island stretches before her, ripe for planting seeds of the cuentos she carries. The cuentos are the stories. Manhattan, a city of hustle and bustle, bigger, louder, crowded, yet alive with hope and possibility. What began as a visit to celebrate her sister's wedding becomes the first steps in a new land. She works first in a garment factory, but it is cold floors and hard edges, not the soft, fertile ground where seeds take root. Then a golden opportunity, una bendición. The library needs a bilingual assistant, bilingual. Buda speaks Spanish, English, and French. She is perfect for the job. Can you guess what the word bilingual means? It's someone who speaks more than one language. Bilingual. Is anyone watching bilingual? Do you speak more than one language? But where are her abuela's stories? Not one folktale from Puerto Rico is on the shelves. How lucky for the library that Buddha has story seeds ready to plant and grow. In the children's room, she lights the story hour candle and begins. Her eyes dance, her voice sings. Buddha's words paint a picture of a little mouse with a round balcony where Martina, a beautiful Spanish cockroach, meets Perez, a handsome and gallant mouse. El ratoncito Perez y la cucarachita Martina, a tale from the tamarind tree. This is one of the stories that Pura's abuela told her. It's a folklore tale. When Pura's story is done, each child makes a wish on the candle and with a wisp of air, whoosh, la vuela is blown out. La vela, I mispronounced it, la vela is blown out. Vela means candle. Try saying vela. That means candle. Now you're bilingual too. Now Buddha has a wish too to plant her story seeds throughout the land. Buddha learns to make puppets. She snips and sews their clothes, paints their delicate faces. Families come to hear folk tales in English y Español to watch Buddha's puppets dance across the stage of her stories. She's doing the puppet shows in English and Spanish. They are bilingual puppet shows. But the library needs libros for its shelves. How can more children read Perez y Martina and other cuentos de Puerto Rico? Hmm, I heard a couple Spanish words in there. Libros. The library needs libros for its shelves. What do you think the word libros means? What do libraries have on their shelves? Books. Libros means books. Buddha puts her story in an envelope and mails it to Frederick Warren, a publisher. There she is, putting it in the mailbox. Soon, Perez y Martina is a book, now a published author, puppeteer, and storyteller. Buddha travels from branch to branch, classroom to classroom, to churches and community centers, planting her story seeds in the hearts and minds of children new to this island who wish to remember la lengua y los colores of home. 
Let's think about that sentence. So Pura came to the island of New York from a different island. She came from Puerto Rico, where she spoke Spanish. She's saying there were also children who were new to the island, just like she had been, who wanted to remember la lengua. La lengua, that means the tongue or the language. Y los colores, and the colors of home. And that's what Pura put in her stories. Writing, learning, speaking, teaching, traveling. Pura does not slow down until, like the beautiful Martina, she meets her Perez. Ooh, do you have any guesses to who Pura's Perez could be? I noticed one person in this room is looking at her with loving eyes. Let's see what happens next. On a December day in New York, Buddha marries the musician Clarence Cameron White. Un año away from the library. Un año. One year away from the library, she decides. One year to start a new life as a wife. But a year stretches on. Together, they travel to new cities. Clarence plays his music. Buddha tells her stories. They are happy years of music and writing. Separations and reunions, friends, family, and stories. Always. Until on a June day in New York, Clarence stops playing his music. And Buddha's story must begin again. It is 1961. Buddha returns to the library. There are others there now, storytellers who make puppets dance, who read Perez y Martina, the tiger and the rabbit, Juan Bobo, the three magi, and many other more of Buddha's stories to the children. The seeds she has planted, the roots that grew shoots into the open air of possibility have become a lush landscape into which she steps as though she had never left. That's the end. This is a note from the author explaining how inspired she has been by Buddha's life. And this is a page telling us about some of the books that Buddha wrote and some of the books that the author used to write this story. And I want to show you a picture of Buddha Belpre. Here she is. She's going to join us in my apartment. Ta-da! Buddha's here with her puppets. There she is later in her life with two puppets. She looks nice. I would have liked to hear stories from Pura Belpre. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed that story. And now we are going to get ready to dance our 60 second dance break. Here we go. For today's 60 second dance break, we are dancing to Juntos Somos Fuertes by Lucy Calentari and the Jazz Cats. Juntos Somos Fuertes means together we are strong. And Lucy is a Dominican woman also in New York City. That means she's Puerto Rican just like Pura Belpre and she's also Dominican. She's both. So let's get ready to dance. I can be me. I can be me. You can be you. You can be you. And together we'll make something new. Será alto. Tall. Será fuerte. Strong. Seguiremos hoy para siempre. Walking hand in hand. We 
Together we strong. Together we shall thrive. I shall be the Lucy Calentardi has so many fun jazz tunes to sing along to. And that other voice you heard was her son, who is also part of her band. All right, folks, I definitely got my heart rate up with all those dance moves. I hope you did too. Let's get in a comfy position for our cool down. We're going to take three big breaths together. I'm going to use my hands to kind of scoop the air around me. And when I breathe out, I'm going to imagine, pretend that I'm blowing out that story time candle that Buddha had with her in the library. Ready? Blow out that candle. You can take a breath in through your nose. Blow out that candle. One more. And this time when you blow out the candle, you can make a wish. Yeah, give yourself a little squeeze and a pat on the back. And I hope your wish comes true. <laughs> All right, friends, here's some ideas for things you can keep doing after you're done with this program. What if you make a puppet or some puppets to retell your favorite story or folk tale? I have what may look like a loose sock and some yarn, but this could be, it could be the beginnings of a puppet. <laughs> or you could use some items that you already have around to be characters. I have a wooden bird and a plastic caterpillar. Maybe they could be the characters in my puppet story. Or if you're feeling extra crafty, you can head on over to the Arts for All YouTube channel and see some puppet making tutorials from fellow teaching artist, Mr. Ron. We're gonna put the link in the comments for you to go over and see lots of puppet making videos there to give you ideas. Another thing you can do is hear a read aloud of the folktale of Martina the Cockroach. Now, I had a hard time finding Buddha's version, but I did find a version that is from Cuba, which is close to Puerto Rico. So this folktale spread to different islands, and we're going to put a link in the comments to a read aloud from someone else reading the story of Martina the Cockroach, if you'd like to hear what that folktale is that meant so much to Buddha. Next thing is... I want to encourage you to visit your library and meet your librarians. Librarians do quite a lot of work, as you saw from the story. They don't just put books on the shelves. They love to bring stories to life. I visited my local library last week. My librarian helped me out so much. When I went this past week to tell them how much they helped me, they gave me something so cool to celebrate Women's History Month. They're making zines. So she gave me all of these materials so that I could do my own craft and resources. You might be surprised when you go and meet your librarian. So much they can help you with. The next thing is to celebrate women in your life. Whoever it is, if it's a mom, a sister, a teacher, an aunt, your librarian, celebrate those women. Let them know that you appreciate them in some way. And as always, stay curious and stay safe. Well, that's all for us for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've been enjoying the program and you have a moment, would you mind taking a very quick, it's a two question survey link also in the comments. It'll really help us out. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week and 
Hope to see you here next time for Mondays with May. Bye-bye. Juntos somos fuertes, juntos brillamos, side by side, we can